What you're laying witness to behind me is the single largest, single biggest 3D printing project I have ever tackled, barely accomplished. This is the 80 inch tall, 45 inch wide. It uses 45 kilograms of polymaker filament. It was 2,500 print hours. I used 800 nuts, 800 screws, this is the Omni 3, it houses all of our board games, <laughs> and there were a lot of problems, so let's dive right in. So when I was in college, I started playing board games, and I know a lot of you guys might think, oh, well, that's kind of nerdy, but that's what I did, right? My friends played board games, and so I started a collection. Now, we're not talking about Candyland here, we're talking about real, you know, I like to call them kind of adult games, but... The collection grew it was first you know three games four games five games until it turned into 15 or 20 games and you know it's at a point now where we need to store these things and it's like where the heck do you put that so at the old house we were storing all of our games in the garage inside of a garage shelf well there's a lot of problems with that from humidity and other kinds of potential damage well at the new house for one our collection you know doubled in size but we wanted them inside somewhere that we could actually access them easily so we put them in the closet but they were on the ground a literal pile of games on the ground we were now getting damage from that so i stumbled across the omni 3 on kickstarter in february of 2024 and i wanted it i had blood for this because it's a full 3d printable fully modular board game storage shelf you can make it as tall as you want as wide as you want you can have as many shelves as you want it kind of seemed too good to be true now guys you're about to find out how huge this project actually is so I want to give a huge thank you to Microsoft for sponsoring this project and bringing it to life. Now, Microsoft graciously supplied us with these Flowtech upgrades to increase our print speed and our quality, both of which are crucially necessary for this project. On both the X1 Carbon and the P1P, I installed the Flowtech upgrades in under 10 minutes each, and I am beyond impressed with the quality that I'm seeing. But beyond that, Micro Swiss really should be your go-to shop for extruders, hot ends, and other tool head accessories. They have been in the game for a very long time and they know what they're doing. So guys, if you're interested in checking out the rest of the Micro Swiss collection, click the link in the description down below. They have been an incredible sponsor of the channel. Stick around a little bit later in the video to see some close-ups of the quality off of the Flowtech upgrades. And let's get back to the video. So when it comes time to actually build such a monster project like this, <laughs> well, when you get the files downloaded on your computer and you're looking at 50 plus different files, boy, it is an incredibly overwhelming feeling. Oh, I am so, so, so excited to just complete <laughs> this project. But we've hit once again another roadblock so the developer made an instruction manual on how to actually assemble the pieces but what he doesn't tell you is if you use two of part a and two of part b you have a 24 inch wide part so i had no idea how to make this actually fit my closet so i had minimal wasted storage space so i did the only thing that i could think of and i sent austin an email well, Austin and I exchanged over 25 different emails. I was giving him all of my woes and he was solving all of my problems. The biggest help that I got from Austin was that he took the dimensions of my closet and he actually made a full CAD mock-up in order to waste as minimal possible space and make the absolute largest Omni 3. 
I got the bill of materials and started printing. So actually, before I could start printing, there is a little problem because, well, this is a project that utilizes 45 rolls of filament. I want to maximize every single gram and I don't want to have any wasted filament on any rolls. And despite what you might think, the solution to the wasted filament problem is actually somewhat simple and kind of genius. So you see, on every roll of filament, I have a custom label. Now, what is on that custom label, you might ask? Well, I have the file name and I have the amount of filament that that file takes. When you read the label from top to bottom, I also have a counter for the remaining amount of filament that will be on this spool, assuming everything goes to plan. So I think I can predict your next question, and that is gonna be, how do I make these fancy labels? Well, it actually is also quite simple. Step number one, gonna be to take every single file, every single model, you're going to import it into Orca Slicer, you're going to slice that file as if you're printing it, and you're going to write the number of grams down into an Excel spreadsheet. You're gonna do that for all 50, all 75 models. And then, next part, quite simple. Step number two, you're gonna take your bill of materials. You need 10 of part A, 10 of part B, three of part C, four of part D, whatever your bill of materials is, and you're going to load all of that information directly into ChatGPT. And you're gonna say, hey, ChatGPT, I have five rolls of filament and I need to maximize every roll. What is the best print order? ChatGPT is then going to crunch some numbers and it's going to say, print these files on this roll, print these files on this roll, and then what do you know? You've got a print list. Well, so the last tidbit of information is that I took my print list and I printed it out and I slapped it on every single spool of filament with some sticker paper so that I could literally mark it out with a pen when it was done being printed. And that is how some of my rolls of filament got down to the bare wire. This one, probably good for the bin. So this is kind of where printing mayhem begins because this project is 2,500 print hours and there's only 24 hours in a given day. So I employed 15 different printers. Even using 15 different printers, the total print time for me took somewhere in the vicinity of two weeks of straight printing. Every single printer had to run for seven days without stopping. That is absolutely nuts. And I do want to give another shout out over to MicroSwiss because take a look at the quality that comes off of the P1P and the X1 Carbon using the FlowTech upgrades. It's easily the best part quality that I have seen on any of the printers I'm using. So one of the things you're probably wondering is how I was actually able to manage 15 printers running at the same time. Well, they were split into two separate rooms, but even still, I was having the breaker blow. And when the breaker blows while you're running four printers at one time, that's a bad day. So this is the second time that the breaker has tripped in this room. I am running five printers. So it's not like that shocking, but I can run five in the other room. I think the culprit is one of or both of these, the K1 Max and the K2 Plus. But anyway, when the breaker trips, really you should just go make sure that everything is still secured to the build plate. And if so, reset it and hope for the best. So between the failed stop loss recovery and some other highly unfortunate circumstances, I probably had about three or four kilograms of printed items that I just had to throw away. So to be completely honest with you, some of the parts, I just printed it in the wrong color. And I probably had somewhere in the vicinity of 40 shelf pieces that failed due to stop loss recovery. Stop loss recovery that didn't recover. But what made me the most upset of all of them are the pieces that were just oriented incorrectly. You see, I didn't find out that some of the files had poor orientations for printing until about 20 parts deep. So these ones also got reprinted. 
And so the first part of the assembly process is going to be support removal. And I would say about 250 of the 300 some odd parts had support. I was literally removing support for hours. So this probably isn't going to come as a shock to you, but assembly was also pure hell and chaos. So this really is just one of those things where the designer was intending on you using a particular piece of hardware and you just don't really have access to it. Maybe you can't get access to it at an affordable price. In my particular situation, I needed 800 screws and 800 nuts. If I were to buy that at the particular links that they provided, it would have been $200 worth of material. And that just simply is not affordable. So of course I went down the list trying to find the appropriate hardware. I bought the first set, it arrived at the house, of course it didn't fit, so I returned it to the supplier and I iterated on this two or three times. It, it was maybe the third or fourth time that finally the hardware that arrived was actually compatible with the design. And this is now also the time that I take all 300 some odd parts that I printed, I organize them, only to realize that I am missing parts. I printed too many of some parts, I printed too few of other parts, and I no longer have enough filament, so I had to go back to Polymaker and order more filament. Of course, Polymaker is an incredible sponsor of the channel. I absolutely love their filament, so I didn't have to actually purchase it with my own dollar. However, we had to wait for another delivery. Now I have two tools that I'm going to use to get rid of all of these supports and the stringing. Uh, the first one are these nippers. I have a second pair of them that I've already been using. Uh, these are not your average light blue nippers. These are ridiculously sharp and seriously worth it. I'm going to leave a link to them in the description below if you guys are interested. I love these things. Second tool that I'm going to be using is this. This is an ultrasonic cutter. It has a little bitty teeny tiny razor blade uh, and it's got some buttons on here. This thing is supposed to vibrate at like 40,000 uh, vibrations per second. Absolutely ridiculous. This will cut through those strings like butter. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. I think you guys kind of get the point. It was like walking through mud, getting through to the assembly phase. So let's just fast forward and get to the build montage. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five boxes of parts. I really don't know the best way to tackle this, so let's just figure it out. And we didn't get all the hardware in the mail yet, so when the rest of the mail hardware comes, the frame. But the frame, uh, I think it's going to be a lot quicker to fall together. Good job. 
The first one took uh, maybe about 45 minutes to assemble, so now that I have all the pieces printed, I'm going to assume about the same. Let's do this one now. components to it but super huge is how big the posts are this is it standing on the ground and how tall it is so um let's assemble together 2000 years later this chocolate is divine anyway now we're standing in front of the completed shelf and you guys are probably like we skipped a step and yeah we skipped a step because I fully assembled this outside of the closet and then I tried to move it in and I realized this shelf is way too big to fit through the door so I had to disassemble it out there and reassemble it in here and there was no way you, the camera, were gonna fit in here, so sorry about that. And so now I'm left with the question of, should I have built this? <laughs> and the answer is no, I probably should not have built this because this thing took three weeks of my time, four weeks of my time to build. I could have just purchased a bookshelf online for a quarter of the price. Something that doesn't have flexing with added weight to it, but you know what? 3D printing is supposed to be fun, and while this project was frustrating from start to finish, looking back on it, it was pretty fun. Oh, yeah, and one more thing. It's really hard to get the camera in here, but I'm gonna try and get you guys a final montage, so let's go.